I'm going to be going over my method and settings for creating a layered wooden mandala using the Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser, the Lightburn software, and I use Adobe Illustrator for creating the actual designs. I want to get it out of the way at the front. I am not a graphics designer. I know just enough of how to use the tools to make something that looks somewhat decent, um, makes my wife happy with the designs I build, and they look pretty good to me. Um, but I am nowhere near as skilled as many of the folks you'll see out there, so I'm not going to dive in deep on how to create the actual mandalas here. I'm just going to go through a couple of the ways I use the Illustrator tool to create them. So the one we're doing today is going to be the shamrock design. You can see it is a four layer design. The top layer is just a simple shamrock that will sit on top of it. Then layering down on that, we get a little bit more intricate of a design. Then we scale that up a little bit. Um, I tend to increase the stroke thickness, add a few more lines, but still keeping it symmetrical as it's going through. And then below there at the base level is another one. Again, thickness and the stroke is increased considerably, um, but it's still the, basically the same design. That way it gives that good symmetrical layered stacking effect for it. With the shamrock, the middle felt kind of empty, so that's why I did these additional shamrocks inside there to give that kind of uh, tunnel type effect. Thought it looked neat. Um, we'll see how it looks for at the end there. I've also done a power cat for the K-State logo for my wife, as well as just designing out just some standard mandalas. They're not really letters or uh, image based. They're just the static kind of layered designs that give you a nice layered look when you cut them out and paint them. We will be cutting them out of 1 16th inch balsa wood and then painting the different layers with an airbrush and putting it into a shadow box. I'll show some of the results at the end. I'm not going to go as far as painting everything though because we want to focus on the laser. Um, but really that's all there is to it. What you want to do with a Illustrator is once you create the designs, you want to right click on a layer. Actually, let me select all that. You right click on a layer and you'll collect for export as a single asset. You do that for each layer. And what that gives you down here is this asset export. You can see here I have all four layers there, at which point you can export them as PNGs, as SVGs, whatever you want. Um, for this example, I'm going to be exporting them all as PNGs, and then I will import those into Lightburn and use the trace image functionality in there. I'm doing that because generally almost any tool you can use to create these sort of designs will be able to generate PNGs or an image type. Um, the SVG support will be varied based upon the different tool you're using, but this allows most of the folks to be in Lightburn. Once you have the design, you can just import and trace it and move from there. So with that, you can kind of see what I want the finished product to look like here. So we're going to go ahead and jump over into Lightburn, and I'll go through the process of setting up the project and doing the actual burn. Okay, now that you've seen the design we're going to be going with, we'll jump over here to Lightburn, and we'll go through some similar processes that I've done in the other videos. The first thing I'm going to do is hold the Shift key and drag and drop a square on here. This is going to be set to the dimensions of the piece of wood that I'm going to be using for cutting out all four pieces of the mandala. For this board, it's warped, so I'm going to have to be using some honeycomb push pins to hold it down, which means even though the board itself is around 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, I'm going to set my working area width and height to be 280 by 280. That'll allow me to make sure I'm working within the cuttable space and that I'm not going to risk clipping or cutting onto any of the uh, honeycomb pins. We'll go ahead and move this down to the lower left corner just so it's a little bit easier to work with and zoom in there. It is already on a tool layer, but if it wasn't, you'd want to come down here and select the T1 tool layer and make sure that it is set as a framing layer. And we're doing this again. This whole layer is just to position the other content to make sure that it's going to be within the confines of the board when we're doing the cutout but I don't actually need to cut this square in any reason. So with that, we're going to go ahead and start importing the images. Um, you can do that from going to File and Import, or you can also just do it with the Control-I hotkey. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and select in the top layer, which is just a shamrock. Now, what we need to do though with this, we don't actually want to cut out this image. We want to use the Trace Image option. So we're going to go to Tools, 
trace image. And that looks good. I'm using fairly simple coloring on this, so it's not really much of a problem to trace it. So we'll go and do OK. I want to grab that and drag it out of the way so I can delete the image off of there. And then we'll grab this and move this back down to the bottom left corner. I'm not going to resize anything yet. I want to get all of the different pieces on here that I can resize them all together so they stay the exact same ratio. So we're going to control I and we'll import the second layer up. And again, we want to do the tools, trace image. You can see the hotkey for that is Alt T. I'll be using that going forward. So again, it's fairly simple, so it traces it without any issue. We'll get that. We'll drag that out of the way and then come back and delete the image. Go ahead and select this and move this down here. Okay. Import, next layer up. Alt T to trace the image. Looks good. So, okay. Drag it out of the way. Delete the image. Go ahead and move this over here and get this lined up about with this one. And then we're going to go ahead and control I import the last layer. Alt T trace. Everything looks good. Drag it out of the way. Delete the image. Select this. Easier said than done, apparently. Select that and then move that up here. Get this aligned there. Okay, then we want to go ahead and select all of these but not the square itself. And we're going to go ahead and move those to an actual cut layer, move them down to one. Okay, so if I zoom out a little bit here, you'll see that we're too big for the cuttable area. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down. Let's try dropping it down to 275. Oh, 275, not 2,375. Okay, so that's there. Go ahead and drag this down and see if this fits within our squared off area. And it does. So now we're pretty well positioned. I'm going to go ahead and nudge this one up and over a little bit. That way, if I do need to cut out some extra pieces, I'll have some extra area in the wood over there. And that's it. You can now see we have all four pieces of our layered mandala lined up within the square. So they're going to be in the cuttable area of the wood. And you'll see that here in a moment when we move over to the laser. So the next thing we need to do is set this layer to be the speed and power I use for cutting on this type of wood. So in this case, I'm going to be using some balsa wood that I bought off of Amazon. It is 1 16th inch. I've been doing several tests, so if I'm cutting it at a single pass, I need to do it at a speed of 155 millimeters per minute at a max power of 100%. If I'm doing it on a three pass, which is what I'm going to be doing in this example, it's going to be at a speed of 550 millimeters per minute, still at a max speed of 100%, but with three passes. It all comes down to trying the different materials. Um, depending on the type of wood it is, if it's plywood, the type of glue they use is going to have an impact on how it cuts, whether it burns and everything like that. So make sure that when you're going through, you do a test on any type of new material you get there to understand the exact settings you need. Um, again, like I said, in this case, I'm gonna be using the, the faster three pass mode. Um, it is three passes, but because it's going at 550 millimeters per minute instead of the 150 millimeters per minute on the one pass, it's still going to be somewhat faster. Um, so if I go and I assign this up, You'll see at the 550, 100, three passes, that's going to take around 49 minutes, or 50 minutes to do. If I switch that over to the 150, one pass, that's going to take it up to 59 minutes. So it's about 10 minutes faster to go with the three pass at the 550. I may still have to play around with this a little bit, depending on how well it cuts out the tiny pieces on here, because you can send, there, see there are a lot of very small pieces. Um, but for now, we'll leave that the way it is and we'll see exactly how everything works. So we'll set that back up again and assign that up. And with that, we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut over and we'll let it go through the cutting process on the laser. I'm going to do this at about 3000% speed because it is going to take almost 50 minutes. So I want to go through it fast. But I do want people that if you want to see how it cuts, you'll have the opportunity to look at it. But then we'll come back at the end and I'll show you the finished product and we'll kind of talk through wrapping up.
All right, with everything now done and off the honeycomb bed, I'll kind of show you how everything stacks together. A couple things I'll point out is normally if you're doing it the right settings, when you pick up the piece of wood, all of the little cuts will drop out. But you'll notice on some of these that have these really thin areas, you may still need to use an X-Acto knife to pop them out. What happens is even though it cuts all the way through, the friction on the wood is going to hold those pieces in place and you'll need to use something to kind of push them out. The other thing to notice is that depending on your speed and power settings, you're going to have an amount of burning or charring on the front and back of the wood. Now, if you're going to be painting it and finishing off, that won't really matter. But if you are just planning on kind of staining it or leaving it as is for the wood look, you need to make sure you adjust those speed and power settings to get exactly what you need. So we've got the base here. The next layer, of course, just goes directly on top of that and you just line up the sides there. On this third piece, um, something else to point out here is you'll notice here at the bottom left hand corner, it's got that notch out where it's not quite an even cut. I wasn't paying attention and my dogs made it into the room and bumped the table, which caused my honeycomb bed to shift a little bit. So it kind of cut that out a little bit differently than it was supposed to. Overall, though, I mean, it still looks okay. Everything lines up, and since it's going to be painted in a shadow box, that won't really be all that visible uh, for the end result. So I'm still going to kind of stick with it the way it is. And then, of course, the final piece is just the cutout shamrock that goes on top of everything else to give you that final layer piece. Um, what we'll end up doing is we'll go back through and we'll use an airbrush to paint these out to the several shades of green to match what I had done in the Adobe Illustrator. And it gives a really nice layered effect. It looks really good to me. Um, we've done this with this shamrock. We've done a heart for Valentine's Day. We've done the different college logos um, for my wife to take into her office and things like that, as well as just some letters uh, for our last name and some for our friends. And all it comes down to is you get that centerpiece for your design and then work on building out the mandala layers outside of that to give you that st static, symmetrical look to everything so it has a good feel to it. Um, once we get it all painted, we'll place it into a shadow box and use a very dark shade of green for the backing cloth behind it to give that finished look for it. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to it. It comes down to building out those designs and then making sure you get your settings correct within Lightburn for the different types of wood that you're going to be using. Um, hopefully that was helpful for some of you and you got some good information from this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to respond to them. But as always, good luck out there with your laser cutting and engraving, and I hope everyone has a great time. Thank you.